Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in John chapter 4, verse 8, James chapter 4, verse 9, and Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 12. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Lord God, for this word. Thank you for showing us the truth of the season and the wisdom of how to live in it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, John chapter four, verse eight. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. All right. And so this is when um, Jesus was at the well with the woman. And so um, this was an important um, scripture, right? Because, I mean, an important time because Christ was ministering to a Gentile right? Um, the Samaritan woman. And so um, we know that they went in the city to get food, but Christ considered what he was doing food, right? To himself. Um, and so the thing is, um, the thing the Holy Spirit was showing me about this scripture is that the disciples were gone when Christ was still working, right? We have to recognize what season we live in as as it relates to our work right if Christ is working we should be working um if he is still going and he still has something left in him to do then we should be about our father's business helping him and making sure that he has his assistant um so even going into the city could have been considered to get food could have been considered considered work, but there are our levels of work, right? We we know that even though you can be doing something good, um, Christ wants you to do the will of the Father. Um, Holy Spirit is leading you to do the will of the Father, not just your will, not just what you think is good. And so it says, for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. So while Christ was still operating, they were um, in the city. All right. And so um, the second scripture that the Lord gave me was James chapter four, verse nine. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your daughters be turned to mourning. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. All right. And so this is a part of that previous conflation as well um, about the fact of recognizing the time, recognizing the season, recognizing when you should be working, when you should not be working, when you should labor, when you should basically cease from labor. Um, here it says, be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. So that this was a time of of mourning and great weeping, right? Um, this was a time not for laughing, but for gloom, right? Not for joy. So for mourning, um, not for laughing and for gloom, not for joy. So we have to recognize the season that we live in. Um, this is not a time for sleeping, right? The, the cry has gone out. So now is the time for trimming of lamps. Now is the time for for um getting well the oil should already be in the lamp, right? Um, but the trimming of the lamp and the the sobriety and the watchfulness and the the going to the door, right? Because now is not the time for for laughter and joy. It's time for the the morning and the gloom, right? There's been a transition. There has been a, a, a difference in the atmosphere and we need to recognize it. If Christ is at work, we our hands should be to the plow as well. Amen. Until he calls us in. All right. And then the third verse that the Lord gave me was Ecclesiastes chapter seven, verse 12. For the protection of wisdom is like the protection of money. And the advantage of knowledge is that wisdom preserves the life of him who has it. All right. And so 
let's just go through this as it is it says for the protection of wisdom is like the protection of money so we know that wisdom doesn't protect you like a shield right but it is an um like a assurance right it is a, a barrier that can be used to leverage bad things from happening sometimes so in the same way wisdom is seeing um, a situation for what it truly is right and applying the biblical or godly response to that that situation right not just seeing the situation for what it looks like but for what God's wisdom, God has given you discernment to know what it truly is and how to um, apply his word, apply his knowledge to that situation. So it says, for the protection of wisdom is like the protection of money. And the advantage of knowledge is that wisdom preserves the life of him who has it. So we can be preserved through the knowledge that we receive from these prophetic words, right? We can be preserved from the knowledge of the word of God, right? It it is very important and it is vital to listen and be sober for the word of God. It is wisdom, right? It is like having money in the bank. Why? Because when you see the storm coming, if you've already been told back there and around the corner that a storm is coming and this is what you should do, that is vital, right? That is your protection. That is an advantage, right? And so it can preserve your life. It can preserve you as you're entering into eternal life, right? And so, you know, if if Christ is working and, and, and he is telling us, hey, keep working, right? Keep your hand to the plow, keep working, Um. Uh, and he's and he's telling you now is not the time for rejoicing now is not the time for for doing your own thing right yeah I, he is so soon to re- return those things are wisdom those things are knowledge those things are useful that's like having money in the bank why because it helps you to be sober it helps you to be vigilant it helps you to have oil in your lamp it helps you to trim trim the lamp when it's time it helps you as you walk forward knowing that hey it could be any moment now right because you don't want to be surprised it says for those who don't watch he's going to come as a thief right and we don't want him to come as a thief in the night to us we want to be watching for him amen all right you guys um let's pray thank you father god for this day thank you for eternal life we love you we praise you we thank you that we know you're at the door we can feel you we can sense you we love you in the name of jesus we pray amen all right you guys if you would like to receive jesus as your savior and lord go ahead and pray this prayer with me but more than anything believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth dear lord jesus i ask you to come into my heart i make you my lord and savior jesus i believe you died on the cross and i believe you rose again on the third day so that i could be saved Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, you guys, if there, if you have re- if you have said that prayer and you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus himself when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth meaning he is going to show you the way and he's going to bless your path. Amen. One of the best ways to learn the voice of the Holy Spirit is to sit down, read your word, chew on your word and talk to him. He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So seek his face today while it may be found. Amen. Also, um, Christ wanted us to make sure that we are led by the spirit and that We forsake not the fellowshipping of ourselves one to another. Go out, um, allow Holy Spirit to help you find a church home, find other believers to be around so that you can stay sharp in the word of God. Go out and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. 
as well as go out and tell other people about Christ and what he's done for you in your life. Amen. All right, you guys, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you, his children, his peace. Take care.